The, the challenge is they don't know what, how do you define what is radicalizing? Because it's, it's subjective perspective. The, the, disingen, the disingenuousness of, and the, the intent, which is a hard thing to prove. Yes. No, Very no, no. Difficult. Right, right. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, obviously, if someone's putting out fake news, misinformation, sure. and disruptive, like, but if someone says something like, my opinion on taxation is X. Let me put it this way. If you purposefully use things like botnets, malware, um, click fraud, ad fraud, and you use that to boost your message, that is fraud. And Absolutely. that defalues advertising. It's 100% fraud. And if you call yourself a journalist or in the media and doing that, I'm going to find you and I'm going to take your money out of your pockets. And There's that's some, what I've been working on the past year. I'm going to avoid saying some names. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have yeah. Oh, they've, their, their servers have already been scraped. We hired 12 Security, who's a renowned um, systems administrator. Oh, wait, and, am, I, am, yeah. I, am I supposed to assume who you're talking about? Uh, you don't have to. He's been in like the Washington Post and New oh. York Times. Oh, yeah. He discovered the the. Well, yeah, I was going to tell you that. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, yeah. He's discovered continue. several zero day exploits, and he's like 29 from Texas, a maniac. Wait, who? Who's this guy? What's his name's Dan Ehrlich. Yeah. He's hi, Dan. Shoutouts <laughs> <laughs> to Dan. So you wait, you found stuff in newspapers or what? Or Not newspapers. Ex exploits no. breaking into them. No, we have found a. Um, I mean, we can talk about. Um, Cernovic site is that his name Cernovic Cernovic, Cernovic. Mike Cernovic. I don't know who he is I never knew who he was till we started looking at his website yeah. uh, these people don't really I don't get on my radar because I just I have no interest in what they're talking about but um, you know we have a report here that talks about you know MAGA 3x yeah what, what is it amplification uh, hashtag movement is what it could simply be like hashtag MAGA 3x but we have you know there's pretty good evidence that it was used to arrange real life flash mobs um, huh and attract, certainly attract American sympathizers online who would agree to spread memes and conspiracy theorists and stuff like that. And the reason we know that is because Jeff Ducia, you're familiar with Jeff no. Ducia? He wrote a um, kind of treatise on meme war memetic warfare. And people don't, I don't think a lot of people understand that memes and memetics are like genes and genetics. A meme is a right, right, right. unit yeah. of yeah, cultural, yeah, right. it's a yeah. unit of cultural currency, if you will. So I, I know about MAGA 3X. It, sure. was, it was literally Cernovich posting on Twitter it was something like, for every Trump supporter, get three of your friends yeah, and but, like, go out and do stuff. I think that's how it started, but whatever it turned into was a lot bigger than that. What was it? Okay. Uh, you got, you got <laughs> the report on the there, Rocco. Uh, I mean, look, there's... And what is this, what is this from? Well, this is from Mike's uh, DMs, right? So yeah. these, these very clearly spell out a conversation with, uh, what's his name? Baked, uh, Baked Jeanette. Alaska. Baked Alaska. I don't know his real name. Jeanette, Jeanette, something like that. I really don't know these people. So these, yeah, the, yeah. I have no horse in this game. I've tweeted at him being like, hey, I want to talk. But, um, you know, this is like basically him and Baked Alaska having a falling out over, Interesting. looks like uh, right after, or right before the deplorable. So I think, yeah. um, and you know, and he, he actually, you know, this, this thing Baked Alaska makes, it says, you know, um, I don't know if you can see that or if the camera yeah, can see it. Yeah, careful with uh, that. Though. The memes he was posting. <laughs> it's a meme. It's a meme, though. I mean, like, you know. yeah, but yeah. So uh, that it, that so that dude started getting more and more white nationalist, yeah, which resulted in him getting banned from social media, right? And then he got booted from a bunch of events for posting these things and for like, yeah, yeah. No, it seems as such. But yeah. I also know that around that time, various um, soup packs um, and super packs were formed that one of them which was retroactively formed and also this talk of this amplification network and what we would assume is a botnet started to talk started to form and we have very clear evidence that that was happening let's we i, I know we probably glossed over a lot of like too much stuff already sure but, but just know, explain yeah. what a botnet is well a botnet is and, and it's a very uh, it can be a misnomer um because it's shorthand for sort of any amplification that's fraudulent or happens and it doesn't even have to be illegal uh so fraudulent would mean anything from hey, 20% or 30% of my traffic is boosted through paid clicks or paid advertising. Uh, it could mean I have malware on my machine that infects your machine and creates a ghost browser that you know can, can push 30,000 3, redirects in 10 seconds across the internet while your computer's asleep. Right? Ba basically, it's a, yeah. it's a network of robots. It's a network you, you of- take yeah, over yeah. everyone's computer. And it's gotten so good that AI, based off of documents, and this is something that you can see on mic servers, right, is like, placed into a bunch of um, document bins and the AI will do everything from tweet to do Facebook to uh, who knows really I, that's beyond my technical level but Dan and I we were putting together a massive report on this that will be transparent we've already given the IPs over to a lot of people we've what, even found some so, so what know, is it it's like what's the bottom line on uh, it? it's a amplification network that makes stories that are that are 
that are disingenuous and outright incorrect, stuff like the Seth Rich story. It propagates that in a way that gets into size people's heads. Everyone knows that memes do that. And it's not a meme in the sense of a visual thing. It's an actual cultural idea that becomes permanent. It also commits fraud that monetizes this disingenuous action. And it undermines U.S. security interest. So you have a report saying that the intention is to... No, I am reporting and parallel reconstructing very various sources that I have that are exclusive and corroborating it. And that's what we're doing. I think part two of our report, This a lot of this centers around a Chinese national named Guo Wenggui, but we're not going to get into that <laughs> unless you want to. But it's, it's, that stuff's bonkers. But like, we would have to sit here for four hours, which I would so, happily so do. The bottom line, what is it? There's American interests that have created it's a, a... It's a national security issue. And it's not just American interests. Yeah, and it's a foreign relations issue, uh, and it should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. But what is it? Like, what, what's happening? Uh, you are undermining U.S. security interest by, by, one, defunding legitimate journalism. Like, that's just from a professional standpoint, but we can put that aside. Two, doing stuff like having spoof certificates on your website that can backdoor into what appear to be uh, government servers. Uh, that's at least from what I understand and what I'm looking at. Uh, and I'm not going to be specific about whose server that is on, but he knows who it is. And that you'd agree that it's undermining national security interests if someone could do that, right? Do what? Do what? what false exposure? If they could backdoor into government servers. Of course. Okay. And three, um, it's disingenuous. You know, stuff like McMaster's leaks and that kind of stuff is, is, is faulty and disingenuous. But what, I, guess, I guess what I mean is you're saying that you're undermining. There, are, there are international interests that, that have created an AI that can boost fake news, like disinformation. No, I would say there's a blend of, okay, it's hypothetical, but let's say that I'm a country like, people forget that it's not just, it's not Russia or China or this. Ever heard of a red hat hacker? Yeah. I'm banned from China because I tried to report on red hat hackers back in 2013. So explain for people who don't know what that So is. people know what a black and a white hat hacker no, is. No, they, well, they don't. They don't. They know, what, <laughs> they, they, know, they know like the Garth Brooks song. I don't, know, I, was, I don't know who wrote it. Good guys always wear white or whatever. You know, like a, a black hat and a white hat cowboy. You know that, right? So like a red hat is, it, it really is a reference to communism because it's, uh, it came out of a Chinese sort of, China didn't have the internet at the same time the U.S. did. And when they did, they got it. Um, it was actually run through Hong Kong servers, the internet exchange there, right? Only recently has Ch mainland China gotten servers. And those servers, um, you know, there's, there's people uh, before the great Chinese firewall, which is how China's internet is censored, right? Mm. Um, stuff like Tiananmen Square, you can't watch it, right? Um, it's supposed to be removed. All references right. are supposed to be removed. So the redhead hackers are people that are security analysts, quote unquote, that get to basically have free access to the internet in exchange for their services, which would be anything, you know, that's in line with the Chinese government's interest. Yeah. And I interviewed several of these folks because it was right after Snowden. I had a great time talking to them because we really spoke in the same wavelength. I'm like, you don't, you're not even loyal to the Chinese government. You're loyal to the internet. And they're like, yes, you get it. You get it, right? It's true. But if you're in China and you want full access to the internet, you're going to have to do that, right? So the redhead hackers will always act in the interest of the nation state that they're from. But at the end of the day, they're just hackers and hacker culture comes from the United States. They're like pirates. Yeah. Like so, how pirates used to be. So exactly. And in exchange for their <laughs> services, they basically had immunity, right? So if they can commit cyber crime on the side, it's a great way to plausibly deny influence from foreign actors. Like if I give you a bunch of malware and say, I'm gonna put on your servers, Tim, right? Or whatever, and that amplifies your message. It, it helps me because it's on your servers you're, even if I'm maintaining the databases that it connects to and using those databases to sell it to, you know, all sorts of various actors, both legitimate and illegitimate, um, it's a great way for me to walk away from it and say, oh, I didn't have anything to do with that. That was all Tim, right? Right. Yeah. It's, it's how they did. It's how the pirates operated in the uh, colonial eras. I guess it wasn't just one time, but they would give privateers, private warships, mm -hmm. letters of mark, go do your thing help us and then we'll disavow all knowledge but you know you're free to loot and pillage our enemies so then you essentially have these hacker groups that the government can go oh no oh they're criminals oh heavens we didn't sanction these hackers but they're doing things that help their, right. their, their nation state right yeah and the u.s is more reluctant to do that because it you know it's in, in some ways it, it's an exploit against our freedom of speech and the boundaries of the law in the u.s for a free nation yep right? 
Yeah. So are you saying that China was interfering in the U.S. elections? <laughs> uh, I'm saying that they've been long interfering along with many other actors that operate both in sync with nation state interest as well as in their own interest. And that's a pretty easy thing to understand. And I, I think, think you also got to look outside of the election because it's not just the election. This has been yes. stuff that's going on beyond just decision making at the highest ends of the government. So like what's what's going on? Well, well, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Is this up? Uh, is yeah, this up? Okay, well, people are being compromised at all levels of the government and also in private sectors. And I think Compromised how? Like, what does that mean? Well, whether you want to call them assets, uh, spies, you know. For China? Not just China, but yeah, sure, we'll, we'll say that. <laughs> no, 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 no. For, for, but for like international uh, it's, interests. You know, yeah, because there are other countries that have align mutually aligned interests and will work together or they'll just work on their own. Right, right. And I'll say China specifically has a very robust uh, Ministry of State Security that spends billions of dollars on compromising Americans and they've done a lot of that already. Do you guys know about how they were going after these university professors and the, what was yes. it, the thousand, is that, is that related to it? Yes. Yep. Really? There's a, list. There's a list. There's of, a list of spies and lists that have been used against databases. Guo was a person that was very interested in this, we'll say. Yeah. And people like Michael Waller were very, or at least duped or wittingly, unwittingly, the deposition isn't clear because pages are missing. <laughs> they used databases that were pre-existing. So if I have a Facebook database and I have a healthcare database and I know the spy names of 25 spies, right? And I use enough interrelated databases just to kind of compare these things, I might be able to out who they are based off interrelated characterizations and, and, and psychographic data points, right? But that's not definitive. That's like well, it is definitive guess. when you find out that Obama or somebody had fifteen of them on a. Uh, uh, yeah. what, 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 didn't Diane Feinstein have somebody? It butts up against security issues, and you yeah. find that out very quickly. You know. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at eight p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell, and we are also available on all podcast platforms for free if you want to listen to us there. Thanks for hanging out, and we will see you all next time.